Hello and welcome to the Intentional Parenting Academy Annual Conference of 2023. Our names are Sylvester and Oluwa Bumisola Ogaji. How we met Coach Wendy? I met Coach Wendy via a WhatsApp platform I belong to, um, 2021, and I started following her anonymously. And then after 2022 TIP Annual, Annual Conference. Conference. We took the bold step to join the TIP Inner Circle mm -hmm. and we became the others. And it has been a wonderful experience till date. Our experience in the Inner Circle from December 2022 to date, seven months from now. It's been awesome. <laughs> That's all I can say. Experience, they say, is the best teacher. You can just come and experience it. We've been able to learn how to connect properly with our children. We've been able to learn how to discipline the right way, far from what the world knows. We've been able to read books monthly and review it. This is awesome. We've been able to have different activities understanding our children's learning styles and temperament it's been awesome and we are still counting before we joined the inner circle it was a struggle trying to get the children up in the morning yeah. trying to give them a structured activity <laughs> trying to make them understand principles emotional intelligence and so many other things yes. how to coordinate in life how to you know transform from being who it they are to awesome. a better person yes. but TIP gave us that opportunity to have a better family yes we are more calmer we are more respectful towards each other we do everything now with peace and calm all because we are yaders that is what we call ourselves in the inner circle actually the university of parenting in Nigeria actually it's true on the worldwide <laughs> <laughs> and so we encourage people that are in this conference to take this bold step and thank us later <laughs> just come and be in the inner circle and your whole life not only about parenting i found purpose as a person while in the tip there are things I've not been able to do with my own life personally now. I've been able to find how to do it. Direction. CIP is the expectation. It's all encompassing. You will learn how to reparent yourself first, and then you can now parent your own children better. As Coach Wendy, when we always say, parenting is about us, not yes, the children. Exactly. So what to expect in the conference in 2023? Hmm. Be prepared. <laughs> Grab a drink. Ensure you register. And when you do that, 
be attentive, listen to what will be taught yes. during the conference and be prepared to change. Don't claim you know it all. Parenting have a manual. Yes. And the manual is how you write it. Parenting indeed is war. And it is only those who are prepared, just like in the days of Noah, that will survive the flood of parenting in years to come. The title of the conference this year again is the battle field, field of, of the, parenting. Yeah, the battlefield of parenting, 2023. Ensure you register and be in the conference. Ensure you take home something, and ensure you inform a lot of people in your cycle. Because when you have better parents around you, you also have a better children around you. Thank you. We welcome you to 2023 annual conference. Ms. Kunle Ologe, marriage counselor and founder of the Marriage Seal Academy. The Couples Conclave is an 11-month annual rejuvenation program for married couples. The programs we have in the Couples Conclave include monthly webinars, weekly bonding tools, activities, book reading and review. We even have a retreat that we do once every year where we go to a lovely resort and the couples just spend two lovely nights and three days having fun and bonding together. Here are testimonials from people who are currently in the couples' conclave. Hello, my name is Matthew Ule. My name is Etima Ule. We are members of the conclave 2023. The conclave has done a lot in our marriage. The conclave have helped us to have more fun in marriage. Yes, because um, before, <laughs> everybody's so busy and all that. And um, I think the communication too. Yeah, has improved a whole lot as a result of our interaction in the conclave. One other thing that the conclave has done for us is that it has helped us to have different perspectives for different couples who are also members of the conclave to know how they weather through when they have challenges in their marriage. So I love the debates. No, yeah, the debates. The debates. The, 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 the others the, versus the ones. Yes, <laughs> there is no challenge that is new. You will see people who have similar things that you are going through. And once you hear their own perspective on how they went through it, you will be able to be grounded in your own marriage so you don't repeat the same thing for which they went through. And um, I would say that one of the greatest effects that the governor, our master, conquered by us. <laughs> one of the greatest things we've learned from him is the mafia style of marriage. Our synergy has improved, our oneness of purpose, and our achievements have generally improved. We want to get you guys to join us in 2024 already. Just come, just join us. And please, we cannot wait for the purpose retreat. Yes. So see you, see you. in 2024. In the complete. God Bye. bless you. Bye. Well, good evening. This is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Okewo. Um, the Couples Conclave program was a program like more like a counseling session for I can categorically say that this is definitely a new frontier for us. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to Mr. Mugay, the governor, for um, the privilege to be part of the Couples Conclave. And that's my husband said, it's really been insightful. It was more like the original marriage counseling that we did not have. And one thing that I also um, liked with the couple's complaint is that it begins to x-ray your marriage. It begins to identify areas that you need to work on. Class is very easy to understand and digest. The assignments, practical things that you can take home and begin to apply. I want to say thank you and any couple out there Trust me, the couple's complete in this. It will be my privilege to guide you every year at the couple's conclave, showing you things about marriage, correcting wrong impressions, and helping you to bond with your spouse in ways that you cannot even imagine. We invite you to register for the 2024 edition of the couple's conclave. Registration has already started and you will find the details immediately after this video.
Don't miss out to be part of the Couples Conclave 2024. You will be glad that you were there. The Marriage Steel Academy also offers different services and products to both married couples and eligible singles. We have marriage counseling, premarital counseling. We have the marriage basics course, and the marriage basics course is such a lovely course. It is a course where married couples who did not go through premarital counseling or who went through premarital counseling but um, could not really get much out of it are taking through all those things that they were supposed to learn. You know, the real basics of marriage. And with that, the little issues that they have in their marriage are sorted out because they now have the knowledge that they need. There's a book, Building Your Marriage Plan. This book has changed the course of marriages all over the world. There's also the book, Husband Manual for Wives. And the sequel of this book, The Wife Manual, is coming out. You can join the Marriage Seal Academy group on Facebook. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Marriage Seal Academy by Kunle Ologi. You can reach out to us also on Instagram at The Marriage Seal. For counseling, please send a WhatsApp message to our WhatsApp number at The Marriage Seal Academy 081 755 73025. And you will definitely get a response. From us. Hello everyone, welcome back to the battlefield of parenting. And our official MC is back. Can we give it up for Joy Unspeakable? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the grand finale of the battlefield of parenting. Tagline, Parenting is war. How has the battle been for you? My name is Joy Eshimokai, and I am the official MC of the Intentional Parents Academy. And with me today, moderating this session is the one and only Mrs. Nod. Welcome, Mrs. Nod. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How has it been for you? My goodness, words are not enough. They're completely insufficient to express how it's been. Hmm. So are you one of those parents right now that is just calm? Is it humbling for you? It is. <laughs> Today I just I just woke up with a great degree of sobriety because I need to ah. soak it in and, and mm. let it maximize and swell up like Gary inside me so that I, I can take it yeah, forward. Yeah. And you know, while I was following all of the sessions, I saw all of your comments, all of your comments, <laughs> even the ones where you were speaking in tongues. <laughs> all right. So if you haven't been speaking in tongues today, today is that day that the anointing, <laughs> you will be anointed tonight. Oh, Ooh. I see the comment session, Mrs. Notch. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's Ooh. loud in here. It's loud in wow. here. It's boring. Already. Already. Tonight, we are going to be bringing you the Bishop of Parenting herself. How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Let me see in the, in the comment session. Mrs. Notch, how has it been for you personally? Oh, my goodness. Like, every day is the best, and then the next day comes and is the best and the best. So is there any word after best? Can somebody help <laughs> us in the comment section? Is it exponential? Is it, is it borderless? Is it mm -hmm. out of this world? I think that is it. 
out of this world. It's been completely out, out of, of this, this world. world. Amazing. I know, I know. And I see the the comment session is buzzing. Everyone is here. Everyone is here. If you're here, I want to see you in the comment session. I also want you to quickly go like this video. And if mm -hmm. you didn't subscribe, you enter through the back gate. <laughs> enter correctly right now. Subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel and get unlimited access to all of the sessions you may have missed. Who are the people that have been on this journey from day one through to the grand finale? Let's 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 hear it in the comment section. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Are you here? Just give us one word, one word to describe so how this past six days have been for you one word one word that's a tough one job word. one word that's I know, I know. Wow. <laughs> wow exceptional phenomenal fireful Woo. explosive <laughs> someone someone said and rightly so today is the baptism Mm -hmm. It's been liberating, massive, awakening. Mrs. Notch, can you see from there? Transformational. Transformational. Wow. Someone is renewed. Energized. Energized. Ooh, this is so good. <laughs> Wonderful. Mind blowing. Awesome. Awesome. Mm. Blazing hot like Blazing. I absolutely <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree with that. I agree with that. It's it's if you think if you think that it's been refreshing, it's been beautiful, it's been fireful, it's been awesome, then uh, <laughs> today is the icing on the cake. You're going to be <sighs> pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> In you, the one and only Africa's best and first, Africa's foremost parenting coach. We're going to be bringing her to you tonight. And Mrs. Notch, what would you have them do? What would you have them do? <laughs> in just readiness, to, in preparation. I just want them to grab a bottle of water. I don't uh -huh. guarantee that you'll be able to take a bathroom <laughs> break. If at <laughs> any point your chair can no longer hold your weight, please stand up. Just get up because it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. Oh. You have no idea what is about to happen to you. You don't even know what is coming. I think if you've been following the Intentional Parents Academy in the last six years, I think you will have a fair idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have a fair idea by now. And before we bring our coach, before we bring our coach, Africans first and foremost, I'd like for the team to take it away. Let's have a quick, quick, quick commercial because some people need to go get their bottles of water, go get their jotters and their pen and just be prepared for what is about to come. Tip, take it away. Hello, good morning. My name is Olushala Bamkole. I got to know Coach Wendy Ologe um, when she came to make inquiries. Hello, good morning. My name is Olushala Bamkole. I got to know Coach Wendy Ologe um, when she came to make inquiries about um, enrolling her children, the twins, in the Bankers Private School. Um, she's one of those parents that I got excited meeting in the sense that she asked a lot of questions. I do tell my staff and, you know, we, we try to ingrain that in our system as a school that when you meet parents who know what they want, they ask a lot of questions, relevant questions, I mean. And um, she's one of those. She asks questions. So you know that this parent, you can't mess up around her. And if you were good, you need to be better. You need to have your, you know, your toes on the ground all the time. You need to be on top of your game for you to be able to uh, meet their needs. And I was glad about that. 
so that's how I met her. And then little by little, um, you know, we were growing in the relationship and fellowship, if I, I will use that word. And then she's, um, she's a fantastic individual. She's also committed to her children. And, you know, indirectly, you know, supporting the school to grow. Because I do tell parents, don't leave everything to the school. When you support your children's school, you are indirectly supporting your family, your children, yourself. You are giving yourself peace of mind. And, you know, you are also contributing to the society. So that's how I got to know her. Um, I had to join the inner circle um, because of a student in my school. Is that, you know, not because of my children, really. Um, by God's grace, I think to a large extent. But I also know as a proprietor, I have to deal with a lot of children and all of that. And there's this particular boy who is really tough. And I know I needed to know more on how to handle him and to help the mother uh, because she's a widow. Uh, so I'm like, okay, so what do I do? So somehow I've, I also feel as a school leader, I need to see things from the perspective of parents, you know, on a, a plain level. So I felt, let me join the inner circle, get to see what's going on. What are they learning so that, you know, some of the um, gleanings, some of the things I will glean, I can also pass on to parents in my school. TIP, TIP, TIP. I was there at the beginning and um, I've always followed um, the Intentional Parenting Academy. And um, it's always a fantastic opportunity to listen to people, share their personal experiences. You may know some of those things, but the angle with which you get it is usually different from what you may have known and then you know there is no harm in adding, adding knowledge vibrant and um functional knowledge to what you already know and that's what the tip um, annual conference does uh, for me and therefore i'm using this opportunity to invite you yes you to come um it's free you're not going to pay just attend and listen to fantastic individuals who have been there, who have made mistakes. Some of them will share their mistakes. And then, you know, as, as it is now, parents across the world, we need to know, we need to learn so that the way we are going to parent our children, we will do it well. We will be able to make good impact on the children and we'll have rest of mind. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Welcome. Introducing the Quiver Cretch Preschool and After School Center. At the Quiver, we believe that every child's journey of learning should be filled with joy, wonder, and endless possibilities. Step into our vibrant, colorful, and safe environment designed to spark your child's imagination. Our state-of-the-art facilities offer the perfect setting for young minds to explore, discover, and grow. Learning is at its best when it feels like play. Our carefully crafted play-based infant and preschool curriculum engages children through exciting activities that promote cognitive, social, and emotional development. The Quiver is a Montessori-inspired school and runs a unique blend of the British EYFS and Nigerian curriculum that give our children the opportunity to work independently and encourages them to take an active role in their own learning. Our after-school care center for children up to the age of 11 is dedicated to providing children with enriching skills beyond the classroom. Our robust project-based learning curriculum gives each child an opportunity to solve world issues with other children that encourages deeper learning and skills required for their future career growth. 
other aspects such as community development awareness as well as world peace and progress are also emphasized in our after school care center program. We provide each child a quality experience that helps them discover their individual potential, foster a lifelong love of learning and mold their confidence all at once. From art and music to creative storytelling to exploring the world of tech, your child will love to come to the Quiver every day. Our passionate and qualified teachers are dedicated to providing individual attention to each child. They create a supportive and caring atmosphere that allows your precious ones to thrive and reach their full potential. At the Quiva Preschool, we believe in building strong foundations for future success. Our curriculum emphasizes essential skills such as language development, early math concepts and problem solving. We prepare your child for a smooth transition to elementary schools are limited, so don't miss the chance to secure your child's place at the Quiva. Come and visit us to experience the magic firsthand. Schedule a tour today and let the journey of joyous learning begin. Call us at 080-99-99-4283 or visit our website at www.thequiverschool.com. Give your child the gift of the Quiver School today, where we play, learn, and flourish. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. We are still live and we are expecting the parenting difference. Wendy Ologe is the foremost parent coach in Africa who believes that her calling to parents will change the next generation of people in Africa. She is the founder of the Intentional Parents Academy, a coaching outfit dedicated to equipping parents and intending parents to intentionally raise their children positively, especially in the face of our decaying societal values. Wendy aims to leave parents with everything it takes to raise an excellent child, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally and psychologically because she believes that parenting the next generation better is the way to have a better world tomorrow. She helps parents parent with peace and calm. She believes that parenting isn't about tips and hacks but a process that walks a child through the 18 years of their lives with the parent as a guide. The Intentional Parent Academy has several programs and courses that help parents run through a process that raises intentional children. CIP Academy runs the flagship and famous program for parents, a program that takes parents through a yearly process and has impacted families and generations to come. She and her amazing team have led thousands of parents using a transformational coaching system called the Intentional Growth Formula, which has transformed over 5,000 families across the globe. She is the author of many best-selling parenting books, including Connect to Correct, Walking Your Child Through Puberty, The Discipline That Works, From Yelling to Calm, Resolving Sibling Rivalry, Parenting Lunch Plan, Sex Educate Your Child Like a Pro, Volume 1, and her latest three publications, Raising the Independent Thinking Child, How to Love Your Child More, and Sex Educate Your Child Like a Pro, Volume 2. She has authored 20 other parenting guides, which are all available in Nigeria and on Amazon. Her books and parenting guides have sold over 500,000 copies across the nations of the earth. The Intentional Parent Academy also runs an online community with over 300,000 members across all platforms. Their Facebook called The Intentional Parent has over 110,000 members as of today, and this was their first online platform. Via this Facebook group, Facebook selected her among 100 others in the globe to be global leaders, leading communities for the circles of Abuja. 
Facebook selected this group to flag off the first parenting subscription group in Africa. Wendy has spoken on many stages, including being interviewed by the biggest TV network in Africa, Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN Africa, on their famous TV program, The 700 Club, not once, but twice, in 2019 and 2020. Her interview has been aired on both international and national TV stations, including TBN, which is the largest Christian television network in the world, and Channels Television Nigeria. In October 2019, Wendy represented Africa at the Facebook Global Parenting Panel at their headquarters in California, USA. The Intentional Parent Facebook group was recognized as one of the most relevant and engaging parenting groups globally in 2019 by Facebook. On the 1st of October 2020, at the Facebook Community Summit, Wendy was named by the Facebook team as one of the people building relevant groups globally. Wendy is the first African and Nigerian to sit on the board of the International Day of Calm. She is also the convener of the famous online parents conference, the Intentional Parents Conference, a global annual program for parents to help transform their generations to come. In 2021, she was named one of the best top 20 female coaches in the world by the Divine Purpose magazine in the United States of America and was featured on Fox, NBC, ABC and CBN News in the United States of America. Wendy also expresses her gift of prophecy perspective and problem solving through mentorship using biblical principles where she leads women using what she calls the no excuse growth formula at the Masterpiece Mentorship Program. She believes that you can be a masterpiece as well as a work in progress simultaneously. Wendy is the executive director at Smart Office, a corporate organization with a focus on developing businesses through capacity building, provision of service workspaces, and hostels for students. Her work experience includes years in the international non-governmental organizations with over 10 years of experience in USAID leading projects. Wendy also has experience in the banking sector. She is happily married to her husband Kunle Ologe, also known as the governor, and she refers to him as a god. Their union of 14 years is blessed with two biological children, a set of the most amazing twins on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the TIP Annual Conference 2023, Africa's number one parent coach, the highly esteemed valiant voice vessel and visionary of parenting in Africa and indeed across all continents, the convener of the biggest and the best parenting conference in Africa, Wendy Ologe. Ta -da -da! Are you screaming? Is anybody screaming? Have you spread the red carpet yet? Are you even ready? Are you ready? Parents, parents to be Ooh. ladies and gentlemen are you ready to receive africa's number one did you see all of the names did you see all of our names wow. oh my god <laughs> the one that wowed me the most is in the bus ladies oh. and gentlemen <laughs> Welcome to the TIP Annual Conference 2023 for the grand finale, speaking on the topic, the battlefield of parenting. Parenting is war. Wendy Ologe. Oh my God, are you clapping? Are you standing? What are you doing? <laughs> Welcome, Coach. It's good to have you close us on this amazing, phenomenal conference. Welcome, Coach. I'm almost. Mrs. Thank you Lodge, so much, I'm Joy. Unspeakable. Take two hours, Coach. Take three. <laughs> Do you want five? <laughs> we don't want to go home. We are here. We are ready. And we don't want you to stop. <laughs> Please take it away. You have this is all the time in the world. <laughs> we are yours. We are yours. Take us away. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Mrs. Notch. And thank you to every single person who have made this happen. I hope I can be heard 
and I hope I can be seen. Uh, now then, um, thank you for joining me today at the TIP annual conference. Okay, it appears the coach is having a bit of a network problem. Mrs. Notch, are you there? Can you hear me? The devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this network will work. This Wi-Fi must cooperate. Come on now. Aya, yeah. Where are the Come worried parents now. in the comment section? Where We're are the worried parents? This war, you know, uh, um, one of the speakers, I can't remember exactly who now, said that the devil doesn't concern himself with non-entities. Mm. <laughs> If the devil is coming after you, then there is a reason he is coming after you. <laughs> Indeed. Ah, oh. so everybody, are you ready? Our coach is going to be back in a minute. Oh, yes. And so sorry about yes, that. Yes. Yes, please. Yes, Thank you is. so much, Joy Unspeakable. Thank you, Mrs. Notch. Um, it's been such an amazing time. Thank you, guys. And I'm going to just get into the conversation of the day because... Um, time we've actually taken a lot of time, but I would like to announce to you that I've written my note four times since the beginning of this conference <laughs> till now. And at up until 2 a.m. this night, I was still woken up to come and write something that I'm supposed to deliver. So I pray that today that you are going to receive what it is that God has for you at this final session in this conference. Thank you so much for being here. And we're going to just start the battlefield of parenting. The battlefield of parenting. All right? The battles you refuse to fight, your children will have to fight them. And that is why that the battle that Saul refused to fight, Nehemiah had to fight it in his own chapter of his life. Now, your inability to confront your anger means your sons will have to fight that battle. Right? That's why Moses who was reputed to be the meekest man on planet Earth, was fighting with anger. Why? He came from the generation of the Levites. And that is what they dealt with, anger. And Moses had to fight a war that he had no business fighting. A meek man, so angry. And that robbed him. He robbed him. Moses was named the meekest man on Earth. And he robbed him, you know, God's promise. Moses couldn't enter the, the promised land. Because of something, somebody, somewhere had done in his generation. Your inability to confront your lust means that your sons would have to fight the battle that you have fought. Now, David had issues with lust. And almost everyone in David's lineage was fighting with it. Even the wisest man on earth, which was Solomon, he couldn't control it. Lust plagued the generation of David. Your inability to confront your insecurity means that your daughters will have to fight that battle. So whatever battle you refuse to fight today, you're leaving it for the next generation to fight it. Now, you wonder why Jephthah, all right? I'm going to be sharing about Jephthah later on in this session. The Bible recorded that he was a mighty man of valor. And yet the Bible, the same Bible said that the mother was a harlot. What has the mother been a harlot and him being a mighty man of valor had to God to do with someone who was that mighty and that powerful, all right? Now, you, you, you can't break that thing that you're battling with, all right? You're setting your children up to fail. You're setting your children up to fail. Now, it, their parents, the excuses are over. It is time for you to stand up and fight. Now, this is time for you to stand up and fight. You see all the excuses. I cannot, cannot. <laughs> I taught the parents in the academy. You know, when you wake up, you say you cannot. Oh, I cannot. I can't, I can't. It is over. That attack on Nehemiah shouldn't have happened. Now, one man's passivity in a generation, another man is paying for it. Nehemiah had to fight for restoration. He had to fight for revival. He had to fight for reformation all the way from the days of Saul. Of what his ancestors couldn't fight. And if he didn't, his generations to come would have been the ones fighting it. Now, give yourself the gift of healing. As much as you are not responsible for what has happened to you, for what has happened to you, believe you me, it is going to confront you in your life. 
When I started earlier, I, I started to talk about Jephthah, all right? And that you find that story in Judges 1 verse 1. The Bible said that he was a mighty man of valor, but his mother was a harlot. How do you relate the two? You can be anything, but where you're coming from is a determining factor to where you're going to. And that was why when he was confronted by his father's people, for him to come and become something, he remembers his pain. And he says, ah, you guys chased me. A man that was mighty. It was his pain that he was actually connecting to. Now, time doesn't heal anything. What heals is what you do with time. What you do with time, intentionality is what heals. And in the process of that thing that happened to Jephthah, you know what happened? He lost his daughter. His daughter died in the process. Now, I want you to pay attention to reoccurring patterns. I want you to pay attention to what I call dormant patterns. I want you to pay attention to what I call reoccurring sin. I want you to pay attention to what I call dormant sin. These things are the things that can burn you in your process without you even knowing that these things are there. They are there. They are dormant. You know, I hear parents say, I didn't even know that I was somebody who could shout until I had children. I became a yeller. Yeah, they are called dormant. They are dormant patterns. You need to pay attention to dormant patterns. Now, it's not about battling. This conversation is not about battling. It's about winning the war. Now, when you read down to Judges 40, he says that all the daughters, when he lost his daughter in the process, time will fail me to share with you all of the process and the things that happened. You can go and read it. Just Judges 1.1. 1, 1. He said all the daughters, you know, in the process started to mourn what they didn't understand. Generations to later. They didn't understand it. They were mourning. Patterns. Reoccurrent. Be the one to heal for your generation so that your, gener your children will not need to suffer what it is that you have suffered. All right, that's a way of introduction to the battlefield of parenting. Let us go into the real conversation. I've written a few things that you must look out for at the battlefield. <laughs> you know, you are at the battle. There are some things you will need to look out for. Many of the times, nobody goes to war, you know, in simplicity. Nobody goes to war without, you know, having to actually look out for things. Number one thing you need to look out for on the battlefield are options. Ah, yeah, yeah. Options. What you make optional in one generation becomes unnecessary in another generation. You make it optional. You know, I, I like the story of Samson. Samson decided that he had the option to marry whoever. He was optional. If you read down the story and the lineage and the thing, you will see what happened to Samson, all right? And also reoccurrence, what happened eventually, right? So, you know, I hear a lot of parents and a lot of parents say things like, you know, my children can or cannot, they have options, too many options. And um, we can go to, you can leave going to church today and, you know, next tomorrow you will go. You know, you can leave, you know, cleaning the, the, this thing today. Next tomorrow you will, you will do it. Now, I am not saying that your children, there shouldn't be negotiations, but any negotiation you do that is not within the confines of your value can destroy you. If your options are not within the confines of your value system, that option can destroy you. That's what happened to Samson. His option was not within the confine of his value system. He said, he said to his father, go and bring me, bring me that woman. He said, why? He said, he pleased thou me. He took, he costed him his eyes and his head. Because he pleased thou me. That's what he told his father. Your, some of your children will come to you and say, ah, because I want. You give them options, unlimited options. Your children have the options to do whatever. I was in school at the graduation over the weekend. And, you know, uh, when, you know, something, uh, they, they, called, they had called my son and was introducing him for an award he was supposed to speak at the podium. And, you know, somebody, I was having a conversation, you know, uh, with my husband. And I said, growing up, I didn't have a, an option whether to be a leader in school or not. It, it wasn't optional. It wasn't, it was not optional. I was having a conversation with one of their teachers. I said, if I have 10 sons in your school, they're going to hold leadership position. Because leadership is not optional in my home. Options. You must be careful about options. All right? Sometimes options cost you consistency. Nobody can build focus on options. No one builds focus on options. Hey, you know, I, I can be doing this and be doing that. A jack of all trade, master of none. Too many options. You cannot build focus within it. Your children have TV to watch. They have this. 
the screen, different kinds of screen, they can't build focus. You know, you've heard me say time and again that the screen takes away focus from your children. It takes away focus. It doesn't, it doesn't give focus, really. So you need to pay attention to it. Sometimes, like I said, it can also cost you consistency. The inability to build consistency. Now we have a lot of children who cannot finish what they start. We have a slogan in the inner circle. We finish what we start. A child is doing something. You are like, just leave him. You bail him out. Your children grow up not being able to build consistency as a skill, and eventually they bail at everything. You know, when people meet me and they say things like, oh, I like your consistency. Oh, I tap into your consistency grace. Who told you consistency is a grace? Consistency is a skill that you build. And you don't build it as an adult, really. You, it's a struggle when you build it as an adult. You build it in a child, child, children. You teach your children the skill of consistency. You teach your children the skill of staying even when it's hard. Staying even when it's difficult. You think it's easy to do this. No, it's not. You stay on it, no matter how hard it is. Your child wants to go and bring bucket. This morning, my, my home, you know, we didn't have to get water from downstairs. And, you know, I looked at it and, you know, I, I was like, ah, it's so foul. This boy is going to climb this tooth. As a mother, you have a bailing, you have a bailout gene. You want to bail out your children without thinking. My husband turned to me and said, we'll go downstairs and bring the water. What happened? Is he dying? You know, I thought of it. I said, that's so the next thing I saw my son carrying a bucket of water, trottling all the way. And then he brought it. If you do not help your children cultivate, I first heard it from my father-in-law, Professor, uh, um, Professor Kingsley Ologi. Prof says that consistency is a skill, that people cheat because of lack of skill. And some of those skills include consistency. You can't stay on. You can't stay at the thing. You can't give your thing to you. You can't commit to a thing. Be careful about options. Children of Israel were worshipping other gods. You remember that when one king comes and says, oh, you can worship any god, the next generation that comes, everybody's mad, worshipping whatever it is that they are worshipping. And the next time, they will forget God. The Bible recorded severally that the children of Israel forget who God, the God that brought them out of Egypt. What do you think happened? One generation gave option. The next generation took, saw it as unnecessary. Whatever you make optional in one generation becomes unnecessary in another generation. Be careful how you give your children freedom. Freedom is an illusion. There is no, there is no freedom in itself is an illusion. Pay attention to your patterns. Reflect on the path that is taking, you're taking. Ask questions. Review your loyalty to, to, to values that you hold there. Review it. Those values you hold there. How, how, why are you loyal to them? As you align to your anchors, you regulate your life into a rigid tool so you are not derailed into darkness. All in the way, in the, in the name of options. Be careful about options. Number two. You need to be careful about opportunities. 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 Every parent's greatest gift is the ability to discern. Every parent's greatest gift is the ability to discern. The ability to discern. Access, gift of perspective. It was DDK that talked about gift of perspective. You need discernment. You know, when I started to read about roots, you know, Ruth 1.1 1, 1 says that in the days when judges ruled, there was famine in the land. And a man from Bethlehem, Judah, he went to Moab to leave. What Elimelech, which is Ruth's husband, that went with both of their sons, Malon and Kilion, what he didn't know is the history of Moab. He took himself, do you know, that Ruth lost his husband, her husband and two sons because of lack of discernment. Now, you know, when people talk about Japa, forgive me, I'm not against any kind of Japa. Abraham Japa and was successful, right? But uh, uh, um, Ruth and the family Japa and they hit rock. My point is be able to discern. When people come to me and say, oh, because this family is doing this, oh, so you guys should actually do this. Believe you me, all right? Believe you me. Sorry, sorry. I, I, said, I said, Naomi, all right? Believe you me, that option might not be yours. 
I remember when the twins were going to go to secondary school. Um, you know, the, 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 a lot of parents were going to um, send their children from grade five. Everybody said, oh, that's what is raining now. Oh, that's what I say that an intentional parent follows the crowd, an intentional parent follows the goal, an unintentional parent, parent follows the crowd. Everything they say. Hey, there's opportunity here. Let's go there. Boom. You don't ask questions. Now, let me tell you a little history about the Moabs. Now, when Lot, Ebuka mentioned about Lot, I didn't have that conversation with him. But when Lot was in Sodom, that's another person who didn't understand discernment. He just saw a green land that was very, 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 you know, marvelous when they were trying to separate from Abraham, right? And he just said, ah, this place looks very luscious. I go there. Abraham, Lot went there. And in that midst of where Lot was, it was a mess. What was the result of living in Sodom? Sodom. Lot's daughters raped him and they became pregnant for him. The first actually had the child called Moab. That's how he's the father of the Moabites. So the Moabites, the Moabites, if you read through the scriptures, you will see that in the generations, the Moabites were in constant fight with the Israelites. So the Moabites, that's where uh, uh, um, Eli, Eli Merak and, and um, Naomi, that's where they went to, to live. Moab. They didn't understand. They didn't ask. They didn't discern. You need to be careful about opportunities. Yes, Naomi, thank you for that. You need to be careful about opportunities. All right? So you can find that story about Noah, um, about Lot in Genesis 17, 37. All right? And let it, where the older daughter had a son and named, named him Moab. And he's the father of the Moabites. So if you're going to go to a place, please discern. Please discern. Now, this is what this sins. Now, eventually, Naomi would be one of the people who came from the lineage of Jesus Christ, as we were told. But she paid a heavy price. That's why I say that some parenting errors will scar you for life. Don't make them. There is no how you can tell the story of Naomi and not tell the story that he, she, she lost the husband and also lost the children. Restoration didn't happen for Naomi until Naomi came back to Judah. You don't want to go through all that. Why not discern? Discern once and for all to be able to have what it is that God has prepared for you. This is so key. Options. You must be able to discern. What is for my child? What is not for my child? Where should my child be? Where should my child not be? My father was the first person who told me, right? That where you lay your head is the most important thing in your life. Where you put your head. Be careful where you put your head. Be careful where you put the head of your children. Number three, ordinary. Be careful of that word, ordinary. Is it not just this parenting thing that we're doing? Why are we even doing it? Subtility. Be careful. Ordinary parenting. They are making noise. They are just harassing everybody. Uh-uh. Parenting. The Bible says, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Is it ordinary parenting? We are stressing ourselves. Please allow our parents, allow parents breed. Be careful of ordinary. Parenting is a call to bed destinies and the process of delivery is never an ordinary place. Nobody gives birth at ease. Ah, yeah. you, you can't be, I don't know if you've ever been in a labor room. How do you stay at ease in that place? There is no ease in the labor room. None. Never. I heard DDK say, never replace values with vacation, spirituality with school, diligence with didalian. And I add discipline with dormancy. Never, ever replace those things. Ordinary. Refuse to be a monument when you can be a movement. Why are you, why are you a statue? Raising an excellent child in our world today is, is, is now something that is, you know, people even laugh, at, laugh about it. What are you even saying? You people are even doing too much. A lot of people are going to be telling you. A lot of people tell it, say it to the parents in the academy. You guys do too much. This parent in a baggy. What is it, self? You guys are doing too much. So in a world where mediocrity is the order of the day, 
raising the bar looks like doing too much. Excellence has now become something that we are now, you know, we are not, we are, we, that, we, we took down at excellence. Build on what you are called to become, not just what you are called to be. Build on who you are called to become. Who are you? Stop defending thy functionality. Because when you defend thy functional systems, you repeat patterns that prevent your purpose on earth. That's how we were raised. We turned out okay. It's defending thy functionality. Don't defend it. Be loyal to transformation. Be loyal to growth. Hold yourself to a higher standard. A standard that is very excellent. Ordinary people do not raise extraordinary people. <laughs> Ordinary people do not raise extraordinary people. Go and read through the scriptures. Go and do your research. Every single person who have raised an extraordinary person had something extraordinary about them. Neither do ordinary people win a war. Soldiers do, and they are not ordinary. If you know any soldier, you understand what I mean. Soldiers are not ordinary in any way. Shift your life to a growth zone. See, the first assignment you have as a parent is not prayer. It's not parenting. It is growth. If you don't grow, you can't be that parent who can become who they need to become. Why do you need to choose mediocrity when you can choose magnificent? Why do you choose ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Now, let me say this. Excellence is not perfection. That's why I say that you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. Yes, you can. You can be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. So when people say things to me like, eh, is it not, well, it, we not you know, nobody is perfect. Nobody is, you know, no, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking perfection. We're talking about holding yourself to a higher standard. See, at the ordinary level of the battle is between good and evil. That's the ordinary level. At the extraordinary level of the battle is between wisdom and foolishness. It's between wisdom and foolishness. At the ordinary level is good and evil. Ah, what is good? What? No, no, no. At the extraordinary level is between wisdom and foolishness. And that's why today we're struggling with parenting. Because our children are not looking for information. They are looking for wisdom. And many parents do not have it to offer. So they are, sc they are scouting for wisdom. And they cannot find it. They can't find it. And that's why I keep saying, right, in the, in, in the mentorship uh, program that I run personally, all right, it's, called, it's actually called the masterpiece. Because I believe that being a masterpiece is not about perfection. It's about you committing to endless process of growth. That's what it is. Number three, are we on number three? No, number four, objectification. Be careful about objectification. The things that you must not do at the battlefield, objectification. Degrading your process to a status of may object. That's what objectification is. You objectify your parenting process. You objectify your parenting process. My children didn't award, win awards, so therefore I have not done, they have not done well. Objectification. I don't have money to buy my children clothes, so we are disadvantaged. Objectification. I need to work so that I can provide many, you know, things for my children and buy them things that others have. Objectification. Parenting is a transference of value. Parenting is co-creation. And that's why I say that in parenting, you're a custodian of time, you're a custodian of treasure, and you're a custodian of talents. If you're not betting these things and you're buying all the clothes in the world, you failed. You just you have just objectified your process. Everything is about, oh, hey, all the things they're doing. Oh, my children are really suffering. They've not, all the things their mates have. Who told you so? Why do you think that that is going to be a, a thing to actually put your children down? Do not objectify your children. Do not liken your children to things. Please don't. Don't 
commercialize your children. They're not commodities. It's only commodities you commercialize. You need to understand that you are here to transfer values because you're a custodian of time, talent, and treasure. Is it, do you know you're not a custodian of money? Parenting does not require you. I have seen people who are extraordinary people. They fry a car in the villages and they raise extraordinary people. So being extraordinary is not you living in town, no, and being all that and popping. No, 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 no. Parenting is not about being cute. That was um, um that was Dr. Louise Akasi. It's not about being cute. You don't need to be cute to produce results. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to show. You don't need to twin with your boys. It's not photo shoot. It's not a spa, as Mrs. Not will say. We're not in a spa session. It is work. Don't objectify your children. Don't. They're not commodities. Don't commercialize them. Don't commercialize them. Every time you're, everything you're talking about is, uh, how will I, oh, money. Money has taken over everything. Material things have replaced everything that you're doing for your children. Why? The last one is obliteration, right? Covering up on your parenting errors and process. It never ends well. It never ends well. Go and read about David. He did. When David's son raped the daughter, David said the Bible said he was very, very angry. He was very, very, very angry, but he did nothing. He did nothing, nothing. What does it mean to, you know, obliteration? Is, is you erasing, you abolishing, or you pretend that it's not happening? Your child has watched porn. He has been watching porn for for two years you just say no it's nothing it's just children you pretend it's not happening you're covering it up you conceal it you make it invincible or even worse still you buy the shame of the child you buy the shame you make it about you a child does something in a bid for you to you know cover up conceal some of the things you say no you make it about you you buy the shame of a child. There's something that we humorously say in the inner circle. You don't buy the shame of another person. Why are you carrying the shame of a child? My children understand it very well. You do something, it's your shame. Why, why am I ashamed? When your logo is a name that is working for itself, make the name for yourself. Do not cover up on your parenting errors because that is going to make a mess. So the more you cover up thinking, ah, I'm trying to help my children. I'm trying to just conceal and all of that. Seek help if you need to seek help, guys. L allow help to help you. If you need help, please seek help. All right? Please seek help. Make sure that you're looking for help. Don't cover it up. So a parent reached out to me recently and I've been working with her. Her, her, her son watched porn two years ago. The thing came up again. And then she came to me and said, did you find help for that boy? She said, no, she didn't know what it is that she needed to do. Two days ago, she sent me a chat. She said, coach, thank God my child watched porn and I got connected to you. It's as if my life has really, really be, been saved. So don't, don't cover up things. Don't blow them off. Seek help if you need to. Deal with it once and for all. Will your children make mistakes? Yes. But please do not conceal it. Please do not buy the shame of your child. It's not your shame. Children are going to make mistakes. And that's why. You can be a masterpiece while they are a work in progress. As all well behaved that my children can be, they are all still children. And can still do things that can get you off. You know? So your, your job is to actually go through the process. Now, what are your weapons of this warfare that we're talking about? What are your weapons of this fourth day we're talking about. Number one is synergy. Synergy. You need synergy between you and God. Who is the one that gives favor? Now, I read through the scriptures and it says that nations that went to battle without the favor of God rarely claimed victory. Rarely. What does that mean? Now, I'm not talking about favor that you shout in church and say, Give me, give me, I receive. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real work. It was Apostle Selman that said that favor is actually a skill. It's actually something you learn. It's actually something that you learn through. I, we teach in the inner cycle favor as a skill. 
you learn favor as a skill. And who were they favored? If you read through the scriptures, you'll see that it's not those who prayed. It's not those who just, you know, confessed. They are those who trusted God and fought for just reasons. Those who trusted God. You know, I see a lot of us say we trust God, we trust God, we trust God, we trust God. We really believe God. We believe God that God is going to help us. No, you don't. Because you even doubt the process of what it is that God is doing for you. You doubt it. You say it with your mouth without knowing that you're doubting God. <laughs> your child is doing something you're like, hey, will this child amount to anything? You're doubting God. When, when you come into the inner sector, the induction, I'll tell you that you need to be, believe the message and also believe the messenger. The message is your child. Your child is a message to the world. The messenger is God. If you do not believe the messenger and the message, you cannot produce results. You can't produce results. You need to trust God in such a way that no matter what it is, you know that he's going to bring you to an expected end. He said, the thought I have for you is a thought of good and I will bring you to an end. I've never in my life thought that my children would become useless. Why? I've never even had a heart to, you know, my heart would be skipping. Hey, after I finish doing all this thing, what if I buy the book they are saying I should buy? What if I enter the academy? Oh, what will be, will be my, there are children, you will say it with your mouth. There are children, you have done, they've done everything that they need to do. The children still, they still go the other way. You say it with your mouth. You say things like, oh, but this parenting does not have any manual. You can finish doing anything you are doing and children will still go haywire. You don't trust God enough. When people talk about faith, I look at them and I'm wondering what they are talking about. The Bible says that without faith, you cannot please God. Do you know what faith means? Faith means that in the midst of dungeon, in the midst of, you know, madness, in the midst of chaos, you still believe that the person who has sent the message and whatever it is he has sent, it will be fulfilled. That's the kind of trust God is looking for. All these, uh, hey, I don't know what's happening. Oh, they have come. I see people share, even in the conference group. You see people sharing LGBT people. Hey, LGBT, they are coming for our children. What is all that? You do not believe God enough. Most of us don't. And if you cannot believe God enough, then it's, you're going to make a mess of this process. That's one of your weapons of your warfare. Synergy. Because you're a co-creator with God. That definition is mine. I said that parenting is you co-creating with God. And when you co-create with God, you become... God is not the God is not holding the destiny of your child. You are. Hi. You are holding the destiny of your child, my dear parents. You are the one. The destiny of your child is in your hands. God has made you a co-creator. You know, why I love God is that God is a God of systems. He has actually created the system that holds you accountable to the process of destiny creation. That's why I say, I hear parents say things like, I don't have time. How do you shepherd the destiny without time? Why does that sit? Talent, time, treasure. If you cannot find the talent of who you have been given, there's a problem. That's why when Samson was born, the man who went back, I said, let the angel come back and come and tell me, this mighty man, this mighty man, please come and tell me how it is that I will raise him. He needed the template. You see, when people say, hey, there's no manual to parenting, there's no, it's a lazy way. It's a lazy, it's a, it's a, it's a way to actually escape your, your responsibility. If there was no manual, why was manual asking the God for a manual? Why? There is a manual, guys. So synergy. Matthew 24 C says, uh, you will hear war, hear of war and rumors of war, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Are you guys reading your scriptures at all? See to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. It, it is not going to go away. Oh, they say, let us pray. Somebody say, let's gather one minute. Please don't, don't get me wrong. Prayer is fantastic. But if you're not doing the job and we're just going to just be going and praying and just, you know, pray. sometimes I have seen and I have heard. Sometimes your prayer is an indication of fear. Your prayer is an indication of fear. 
When Moses was going to part the Red Sea, he was saying, hey, God, hey, what is it? God said, what do you have in your hands? What do you have in your hands? That's what God is asking you. All this year, hey, you have this. You're attending a conference. You're saying, hey, God, oh, hey, where do I start from? What do you have in your hands? So do not pray out of, out of fear. That's not the kind of prayer God is looking for. Prayer is actually you communicating. God wants you to bring everything to him. But God does not want you to bring fear. Stop praying with fear. If God can trust you to be a parent, why can't you trust him through the process? Why can't you trust him that he knows what he's doing? Is he not the one that created the system and said, I'm sending this child with a message? Why do you now think that at your level, you just think that ah, this God is not going to back down and just allow you just be there? No, he will not. He said, you will hear of wars and rumors of words, but see that you're not alarmed. Many of you are alarmed and there's no need to be alarmed. No need. Such things must happen and the end is still to come. What will come, will come. What will come, has come. It is not going to, according to Kuchebuka, the ark is already, the flood is already here. So don't pray out of fear. Just go in synergy with God. Ask God, you have made me a parent. You have trusted me. I want to trust you through the process as well. How do you trust God? You need to commit to learning what you need to do. You do your part. My, my, my pastor will say, that any faith that holds God absolutely responsible is an irresponsible faith. That's Bishop David Oyebo. Fear shows sometimes, fear shows lack of trust. All right? Fear shows lack of trust. God promises us protection. It's your job to parent. God is never going to parent for you. It's your job to parent. And that's why people like Moses, people like, um, people like uh, um, David, God didn't parent for them, even though God loved them a lot. Number two, systems. No one wins without creativity. This is a quote by John, I don't know his second name. It says, he always says that you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So all this, I mean, I have goals, I have goals, I have this, I have all of that. My children are going to become this 20 years to come and all of that. What are the systems that we produce the result? I have said it before and again, that any parenting that have gone wrong is as a result of a system that failed or a system that was never there. Many of the times, it is a system that was never there. Or a system that was there that was never followed. Never ever followed. So we don't rise to the level of our goals. All right? Thank you so much, Mrs. Notch. James, James Clare. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We actually fall to the level of our systems. So your success will be according to the systems that you have. Why do you think that God is such a trailblazer? <laughs> he's a God of systems and principles. That's why he's a, he's a, he's a trailblazer. That's why he's a trailblazer. And this is so, so key. All right. So every parenting error is as a result of the system you don't have. Now, no one has said that before wins a war without creating systems. What systems run in your home? See, it's not enough to make rules. It's not enough to say, in my house, when you come, nobody should do No, no, no. Are there systems that hold you accountable to that rules that you're making? Are there systems? You yell at your children. You continue. You can yell at your children from now till forever. If you don't have systems, you continue to yell. You will yell forever. So you need to ask yourself, 
Do I have the system that will help my children to stop yelling? Somebody once asked me, I, I see that post over and again on social media. Is it possible to um, get your children to, to, to um, prepare for school in the morning without yelling in the morning? And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? The systems in my home prohibit me from raising my voice in the morning. Raise my voice and just be shouting in the morning. Hey, hey, the systems won't allow me. It doesn't allow it. There's a system in the home that holds every single person accountable. So all these, I have, I have prayed to God. I want to stop it. Nah, if you do not have a system, if you do not have a system, it's going to be there. And it's going to haunt you for life. You just be there. You, you come out again and say, yeah, I, have pray, I really tried though. I really want, I, I wrote the book from yelling to come. From yelling to come is my personal experience of trying to stop yelling for, this, for years. I prayed. I entered into the prophetic. I did, did this as anointed as I am. If, you don't, if I don't have systems, I will not stop yelling. I can teach you all of it and it will never stop. This is so, so key. It's not enough to make rules. You must build system. One problem I see in many parenting classes is lack of system. We know a lot of hows, but we don't know a lot of whys. He who knows why is greater and better than he who knows how. Why is the principle. How is the methodology. Many times we do things, we don't know the principle behind the system. <laughs> behind the system, behind the whatever it is that we're doing. So it fails. Most of the times, it fails. This is so, so key. All right? Let's get to the third one. Structures. Structures. See, the walls that Nehemiah built. You've heard about Nehemiah, like in three sessions in this, in this whole session. The walls that Nehemiah built were for protection. And walls provide security, shelter, and a sense of belonging. That, that's what walls do, do, right? Now, the, 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 that sense of belonging, that protection, that, that security, that shelter is what it is that we're really talking about. Do you have walls? So think about structures and think about walls. What kind of walls do, you have, do I have? If you do not have a wall, if something crawls in, it was um, Uncle Saleh that said that, if something crawls in, you will not know. But if you have a wall, if something calls in, all right, crawls in, you're going to know. Now, the inner circle structure is one that when, you when, your, fence, <laughs> when your fence is down, you will see it. What are these structures? We're talking about values. We're talking about identity. We're talking about history. You know, anytime I read about Samson, I've mentioned that before. God gave Manuel. So Manuel went to God and got a, and got a, 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 what's it called? And got a Manuel, right? But you know what? He didn't implement it. He didn't implement it. Because Samson married where he should not marry. Because when they asked, when they asked, he said, he pleased thou me. Options. He pleased thou me. They barbed his hair and removed his eyes because he pleased down me. So when I tell the parents in the inner circle, I say, it's not everywhere my children will go. Children will not marry everywhere. You know, it's not pride. It's self-preservation, guys. It's not pride. It's not, I don't want anybody coming down to come and say, please down me. Not in my house. It will not please you down you. There has to be a structure. All right? When you break the edge, that's what Ecclesiastes 10, 8 says, serpent will bite serpent we bite so structures help keep us in check in structure all your options are inside that structure not outside of it everything inside that structure not outside so your options are within so when people say oh i cannot marry from a particular side of a tribe tribe is not a nation no. tribe that's not what it means tribe is not it's not your village we're talking about values. We're talking about identity. We're talking about belief system. We're talking about principles. So it's not, it's not pride. It's self-preservation. And it doesn't have to be yours either. Because Manoah had a template for something because of who Samson was. 
Everybody decided that ah, 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 you can be anybody. Something can just follow anybody. It can just be anybody. It doesn't matter. She be everybody is just marrying from everywhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is very, very key. All right? So structures that you can put in in your home. What are those structures? It was somebody that came that was talking about value system. You know, I laughed because when you come into the academy, the first thing you do is to create a value system. I do not understand how anybody will parent without a value system. What structure will you build on? You know, the Bible said that what would the righteous do if the foundation is, is wrong? You know what it means? It means that even in your right, righteousness does not exclude you from the consequences of a faulty foundation. So you can be righteous and the consequences of faulty foundation will still be there. Foundation. Your value system are your foundations. What value system are you parenting on? Everybody's doing it. That's how they do it. Do, do you understand who it is that you are called as a family? I know what it is we are called as a family to do on earth. So if I say there's a place that we will not, will not go to, it's, it's because of who we are. It's because of who we are. It doesn't have to be you. Yours can be anything. You can be called to become a, a, a David, David Doe or a celebrity or somebody who dances, you know, everywhere on the streets. But that's not what my family is called for. So we build the structure in the confines, all right, of our value system. That's the first place to begin. That's, what, that's the first place to begin on your journey, all right? Another part of structure is boundary. Boundary is practically about producing structure. So I said, number one, you see value system. Number two, you see boundary. You see boundary. Most times, our discipline is for, our lack of discipline fail. Our discipline fail for lack of structures. So it can't hold. There's no center. There's no where you are actually taking off from. That's why I say that discipline is a parent's problem, not a child's problem. Discipline is a parent's problem and not a child's problem. The moment you make discipline a child's problem, that discipline fails. Because discipline is structure in itself. The structure you put in place as a parent is what makes the difference when it comes to discipline. So what discipline process do you have? Or you're just, you know, waking up and just saying to yourself, you know, oh, what is it that this, oh, everybody, that's how everybody is doing it and all of that. Structure is essential in building anything that thrives. What is the discipline system? You must first define what problem your family is created to solve. Go to God and say, what is the problem that this my family is created to, to, to solve? So I'm of the Igbo descent. And one of the things I have learned over the years is the offer system in my own place. So every family has an offer in my place. What that means is that you are giving what it is your family will solve. I hear that my family are a family of teachers. It means that once we teach, anything that we teach will actually prosper in it. It's history. I'm a child of history. I like to go back to where it is that we're coming from. Let me know what is doing me and how it's doing me. Very important. So what is it that your family is called for? Have you gone to ask God, what, why, what is the family? Why did you, you think you just came together to have children? Yeah, you, that's where you missed it. Yeah, you know, after nine months, yeah, have you had children? Have you had children? Did you ask God, why did I come together with this man? What is the vision for me? You think you came together just like that? No. There is a problem your family is supposed to solve. Ask God what that is. Prayerfully go and get that answer. And then begin to run on it. That is what will define your strategy. And your mission defines your strategy. Your mission defines your strategy. And your strategy defines your structure. So you need to first of all find what is the mission. What is the mission? Then that mission will define the strategy you are going to follow. And then that strategy will not define the structure. Time has failed me to be able to you know, begin to share with you structure. Oh, this is how you create structure. This is how it's, it's, it's a whole lot, 
<laughs> it's a whole lot. That would be me teaching you everything in the inner circle. So you need a foundation because insanity is building major structures upon foundation which literally do not exist. And that's what I see in parenting. Many of us are building things on top of a foundation that doesn't exist. There's no foundation at all in the process that you're taking. So even when you have those in place, never be afraid of the world cracking. When you have your structures, do not be afraid of those worlds cracking. Remember I said that your structures are worlds. Don't be afraid of them cracking. That's what I call the hidden curriculum. Crystals reveal their hidden structure only when broken. Crystals reveal their hidden structure only when broken. So when your child makes a mistake, take it that, okay, this is my wall. The wall is cracking. I need to fix it. Don't go and bring down the wall totally because the wall cracked. Fix it. Fix it. All right? The hidden curriculum can never be seen in concealed structure. So when you have that hidden curriculum, you can't see it in concealed structure. You can't. So if the structure is not cheaping, you can't see it. You can't see it. So mistakes are a proof that there is a building in the first place. Mistakes is a proof that there is a building in the first place. So if your child is making a mistake, take it as a blessing. Because that's where you will now re re reinvent your structure without mistakes you cannot you cannot create your structures again you can't so when people are so afraid of criticism afraid of mistakes afraid of that means you cannot you can't recreate those things you you don't know what is chopping inside so allow the cracks to happen mistakes are okay and then we have skills skills the bible says that the labor of the foolish weary it every single one of them because they do not know how to go to the to, to city one of my favorite scriptures the foolish an unskilled child will weary you an unskilled parents will weary the child an unskilled parent is a disadvantage an unskilled parent is a disadvantage to their child you know, it was in Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 7, where Solomon was saying, send me skilled men. He didn't say, send me prayerful men. He said, send me skilled men, skilled men. You are raising children who are totally unskilled. They can't send for them. You cannot send for people who are unskilled. You only send for people who are skilled. I have said it severally that you can love your child and still be relevant to your child. Because you, are, you, are, you, you don't have anything to give. People go to people who have value to offer to them. It's not people who, do, who they love. You might not necessarily love me, but I give you value. That's why you're here. Value. Raise children who are valuable. Valuable. Because people do not send for children who are unskilled. You can't send for me if I'm unskilled. You can't. Skill, skill, skill. You need to skill up yourself to be able to skill up the child. Stop telling me, oh, uh, I don't know. That's who I am. That's how I am. What I see these days are parents who are, do not know how to swim, trying to raise children, trying to save children who are drowning. You can't swim. Your children cannot swim. You go to the swimming pool. You are trying to pull them up. How? Like how? You become a disadvantage to your child. A, a total disadvantage. You know, those parents that their children come to, they're like, if I tell mommy now, they will not understand. Mommy, don't worry. You are not useful in that manner that you think. Will they stop loving you? No, 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 no. They will love you. Your children would love you. Love. Hey, love is not the only ingredient to sustain a relationship, both between you and your child. If my children are not useful, you know, I usually humorously say that if my children meet a, a, a wife and I'm dead today, a second wife comes, we get all these wicked stepmother. It's out, it's out of children who are unskilled. I said, I keep saying it. I said, you just love them. My children have become so valuable that 
I, I look forward to having them around. I have become so valuable that they can come to me for wisdom. They can, so don't tell me you love your child. Oh, I love my children. Hey, I love my children. Why are they telling me to join an academy? Don't I love my children? I know how to pray. You can love your child and kill your child without knowing it because you're unskilled. I've seen it severally. There is no parent who actually do not love the child. It's, it's actually almost rare. So everything you do is for the love of the child, whether good or bad. Go and read 2 Chronicles 2, 7. You read it down. He said, now send me skilled men. Your children will only be sent if they are skilled. Skill them up. Skill them up. Stop trying to rescue people who are drowning without you trying to skill yourself up. Skill yourself up. Stop pointing fingers at the children. There are so many parents who are battling low self-esteem, who cannot, but every time you say, why are you, why are you not greeting? Why are you keeping your high, head down? Why are you, you have not dealt with your problems. And you have a lot of it. You have a lot of it. So don't, don't give me that, I love my child. Nobody can teach me how to parent my child. Who told you so? Who told you so? If you're unskilled, you will kill your child without knowing it. You become a disadvantage to your child. So you are either an advantage to your child or a disadvantage. Some of us have become a disadvantage to our children. I say, and I say again, that we are a product of who raised us. Where we are raised. What the person who raised us know. What do you know? You either be an advantage to your child or you become a disadvantage to your child. Which one are you and where are you? The most potent skill on your journey as a parent is learning how to learn. Because the first responsibility of a parent is to grow and not to parent. Not to parent. Never use the excuse of I am a work in progress and you get stuck. Eh, I'm work in progress. I'm just a work in progress. You can be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. Rehab was, she was a prostitute. And yet, she was a masterpiece at the same time. A work in progress. Become so good and start using the good part while you're working on another part. Stop telling me, hey, hey, my, I don't know, I, I'm still working on my, you can be a masterpiece because you are. Every skill you acquire doubles your odds of success. That's Scott Adams. Every skill you acquire, it doubles your odds for success. You want to become a successful parent? Acquire skills, guys. Acquire skills. Having a skills makes you undeniable. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. It makes you undeniable. People cannot deny skilled people. You do not have a choice. You don't have a choice because you will need the person who is skilled. Somebody that is a plumber. You is a plumber. If you cannot do the plumbing work, would you need the plumber? You, it's undeniable. Skills makes you undeniable. Undeniable. People might not even like you, but your skills will actually speak for you. You don't have a choice. And that's why the Bible says, see yet a man diligent in his business, he will stand amongst kings and not mere men. Skill up your children. Ordinary people don't stand in front of kings. When they stand, they are standing as slaves. When ordinary man is standing in front of a king, they are standing as a slave. Ordinary people don't stand in front of a king. When they are, they are standing as slaves. Make your children extraordinary. All right? Skills is what, you know, is what builds wisdom. And knowledge is, is about a thing. Don't bring your needs to the marketplace. Bring your skills. Bring your skills. What a lot of parents are doing is that you're bringing your needs to the marketplace to your children. Your children need your skills. They need your skills. They don't need your needs. Everything your child is challenged with as a person. Am I skilled to deliver on this process? Do I have, you know, the, 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 the capacity to help my child? Do I have the capacity to help my child? Do I... This is what gives you the ability to trust your process. Skills and confidence. They are an unequal, that they are like, you know, two army. You are skilled, you are confident. Boom. That's it. Stop bringing your needs to marketplace. Bring your skills. Your children are looking for your skills. They're not looking for your needs. They're not looking for your needs. Stop parentifying your children. Oh, you're sounding helpless. Hey, my God. And uh, this one. This one, that one. Stop bringing your needs. Bring your skills. Go and skill up. 
That's why you have a responsibility, dear parents. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's not a spa. It is war. Force has no place when there is need for skill. Unfortunately, a problem you will solve with skill, you're using force. You're fighting. You're fighting because you do not know what to do. That's why you're fighting. He's an unskilled parent that is always shouting, using koboko. You're unskilled. And until you understand and believe that you're unskilled, nothing changes. It doesn't matter how you argue. It doesn't matter how you say, ah, that coach, what is she even saying? It does not matter. It doesn't change it. The truth is the truth. Get skilled up. Skill up your child. You're struggling because you're unskilled. You're struggling because you're unskilled. This is so, so important. And as I begin to round up, I want to just you know share some few things that you must take note of as you go from this place. Number one, make failure your friend. I do not say a desire to fail, but lessons of failure. Failure is not a person. Failure is an event. Failure is not a person. Failure is an event. Stop saying, oh, I failed. What is I failed? I've never, I don't use those words. I failed is what? This process failed. What do we do about it? You think I haven't failed? Many times. All right? All these, oh, I, I failed. Oh, this one. The process has failed me. What do I do? And then I sit back and I learn the lessons from that process. Even as excellent as this conference has been, there are lessons. There are failures at the back end. <laughs> and we must take the lessons and deal with it. So you're seeing it at the front end. It looks oh, awesome. But there are lessons I have learned. That failure is not a person. Failure is an event. And in the sequence of your growth, you must make peace with always reviewing your system. What worked? What didn't work? And why? And that's what we do in the, in the academy. All right? That's what we do in the academy. Rewire. When parents come to me and say, you think you will not make a mistake, you will. I remember a particular parent whose child, all right, was um, um, wrongly accused of touching a girl was 14 years. He was, she wanted to bail out the boy. I said, no way. He will go on suspension, man. Don't worry. He will learn the lesson. He said, oh, the school that is starting two weeks is exam. Nothing will happen to him. Nobody died for not writing an exam. Nobody will die. If you, if you, I'm sure you are very familiar with those words if you hear that. Nobody died. No one. And even if the person, the somebody dies, the, the people on earth are going to leave. Eventually, this boy came out. Learning a lesson of boundary and coming out to become a better person in life. The mother kept thanking me. Kept thanking me. Number two, take action. It doesn't matter how much excuse you make for lack of implementation. Nothing works without someone working it. Nothing works without someone working it. See, there are systems and they work. I was talking to a, a teacher in my son's school. Who was telling me, ah, you should be very proud of your son. Oh, he's a very, he's already a prefect. Oh, he's in junior class, already a prefect. Oh, he's the best behaved boy in the school. Blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, I said, if I have 10 sons in your school, they will do the same process. 10 of them. Because I understand the system that works. It's not, it's not scalo calo, guys. It's not. It's a system. Take action. Take action. Your excuses, I say this in the inner circle a lot. Your excuses are tenable, but they don't produce results. So you can give all the excuses. I don't have time. I cannot join the inner circle. I cannot. It is okay, but they will not produce the result. You know, there's something I say. Is it that you pay today or you pay later? Either way, you will do the time. You will pay. There will be something to pay. All right? I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. It is a crippling statement. Action means... I am going to start doing something, one thing that I have picked. And that while I'm doing it, I'm going to have clarity because clarity only happens when there is execution, not when you are crippled. I, that's why my people say, I, I, I don't know what my vision is. I don't know what my vision is. I'm, I'm waiting for God to unveil my vision. Who told you that God unveils vision to you in that manner? A vision is, purpose is something that you're hanging on the it's hanging on the cloth hanger. You go there and carry it and wear it as clothes. Your purpose is not, that's not how it functions. 
In fact, if God shows you that purpose you're asking for, you will run away. If God has shown me what it is that TIP will be today, I don't think I would have gone on this journey. Don't ask for what it is that you cannot even phantom. It is a, it's something that you do in execution. Clarity comes from doing. It comes from doing. I ask, what can I do where I am with what I have? Stop the excuses. What do I have? What can I do? Somebody's saying now, oh, I have not joined the academy because I don't have money. I don't have, that's why the widow of Zarephath, when Elijah came to him, he said, he said, he said, I don't have anything. There's nothing I have. He said, if you have nothing, you will get nothing. He said, go and borrow. That's what Elijah, a prophet talking to a widow. You might actually think that in that, you know, in that whole, this system that you're going to be seeing, you know, the prophet saying, hey, yeah, oh, yeah, you're a widow. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, we'll look for a way. But he said, if you have nothing, you will get nothing. He said, go and borrow. What is in your hands? What is in your hands? Ask yourself. You are not disadvantaged. You are just not taking actions. In the little space where you are, stop sounding disadvantaged. Stop. Stop. Stop all these, uh, I don't know where, I don't know where to start from. You're sounding disadvantaged. Take action, no matter how small it is. Take action. It's only doers, not dreamers, that deliver the future. Until Joseph took steps to do all he, he had seen in his dream, there was no result. Though. Instead, he earned him struggles, envy, because he wasn't taking action. Hate. If he shut his mouth and executed, he wouldn't have attracted envy and all of those things that you know happened to him. So in parenting, all your intentions are great. Your dreams can never deliver without systems, without structures, without skills. The next one is find you. No one can lead anyone that they don't know where they are going. Discover who you are. Discover who you are. See, there are forerunners who have gone ahead of you to actually put systems in place. TIP system is a forerunning system. Don't, don't joke about it. And you're still sounding helpless. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Because trust me, believe you me, you can't. Because that's where the gift of perspective actually comes from. The next one, you're a parent because you are a valuable commodity. You're a valuable person. You are, your what is so big. Believe it. Believe it for that assignment that you have. Believe it. Teach your children how to solidify for strength instead of, you know, working on their weaknesses. I always say that you can never make success by hitting on people's weaknesses instead of their strength. So you, you come from strength to weakness. That's what it is. Another thing that you must take note is that mentorship is God's way of helping mankind. I, I heard that myself. Mentorship is God's way of helping mankind. That's why you have series. You have, you have Elijah. You have Elisha. You have, it's God's way of, ment, of helping mankind. Yesterday I said that mentorship escalates you. It escalates you. Take you to a place that you never thought. You know, a place you would have been reaching for 10 years. You will reach there in no time. Learn to discern. Learn to be very discerning about relationships. Who are the people that are called to you on the journey? Who should help you? Who should help you? There are some, there's something that I call parenting partners. If you do not recognize them, then you can fail on your journey. The next one is your self what is your being and not your be. It's, it's, it's continuous. So stop hanging your self word on your titles, your trials, your triumph. You need to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? The next one is the seasons of life. Stop fighting your parenting seasons. Observe them. Stop fighting your parenting seasons. Observe them. There are things I can't afford to do now. Because in the season where I am, I cannot do it. Understand the season of life. Right? Understanding it is the most important skill you need to acquire in life. Where am I at this point? You cannot have toddlers and you have, you have breakable things and you're shouting everywhere. You will shout now because the systems in your house does not, does not help you to actually put help your children actually grow. Your, your, your house is not created in such a way that it helps your children. Unfortunately, all right? The change in your child, the experiences you're struggling with, 
your relationship, circumstances might be an indication that you are in a new season. Don't take that for granted. It might be an indication that you're in a new season and that you need to step up your game. Step up your game. It might be an indication that is calling for wisdom. My children are no longer listening to me. My children are no longer doing this. It means that there is an indication that there's a call for wisdom. So instead of you complaining, hey, I have tried, I have done this for my children. I have done, hey, hey, ask yourself, is there something I need to do about this circumstance? Is there something I need to do about this relationship? Is there something about to do about this experience? Am I supposed to be stepping up my game for wisdom? Maybe that season is calling for wisdom, not just information. Ask yourself, where can I get it? And lastly, time. I say all of the times that time is the currency of destiny. And as a destiny custodian of time, you are a custodian of time, you are a custodian of talent, and you are a custodian of treasure. Time is the currency of destiny. If you don't do the time, you will do it. And because it's a currency, you must pay it. So currencies are for you to pay. You must pay it. You're going to pay it. So you will pay for the time. So whether you pay for it now or you pay for it later, it is a currency. It is a currency that you need to pay. I am hoping that as you have listened to me today, that you have been able to pick even if it's one word for you to be able to take action and not be in the place where you are going to overwhelm yourself, there is no need for it. But move so that you can actually also become a movement instead of just being a monument. Because you're not ordinary. If you're going to raise an extraordinary person, then you must become extraordinary yourself. Remember, you have the ability to become a masterpiece and also be a work in progress simultaneously. Thank you very much, everybody. And um, here we go. I think you're muted, Joy. This is not, I'm trying to find my voice. I don't know if you found yours yet. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. The whole place is silent. The whole place is silent. I've written notes. I've not written. I think the notes I've written tonight is same as I've written for all of the sessions. Coach, thank you so much. As a parent, you are a custodian of time, of talent. Mrs. Notch, where is your voice? My voice is right here, ma'am. It's right here. <laughs> Thank I you so you much, Coach. <laughs> Someone said they've written 11 pages. Thank you so much, Coach. And this is a befitting grand finale. Yes. If you're not in the inner circle, yes, you will be overwhelmed. But this is the best boost that we receive every now and then that keeps us all accountable to our process. So if you're not in the inner circle, now is the time to get in. It is the act of safety. Everything coach has spoken about tonight will only make sense to you if you commit to the process that is available in the TIP inner circle program. That's all I can say for now. Mrs. Notch. You know, thank you so much, Coach Wendy. It takes a lot, a whole lot to deliver this to this generation and even for generations to come. We will all be weighed by what we have heard today and indeed throughout this conference. And I believe that once in a while, in a figment of time, there comes something called epoch moments. Yes. There are marked moments in time that don't come around often. Usually they're, they're one or so in your lifetime. I believe that this entire conference, the Battlefield of Parenting, is an epoch moment for everybody that has attended and even those that will watch it later on. 
this is a moment in history that I don't even think we'll ever be able to get it back. What happens tomorrow is going to be determined by the decisions that you make from today. Beyond joining the inner circle, this conference has x every single one of us, without yeah. exception, I'm sure. You have heard what is yours. You have received what is yours. You've been uncomfortable. You've been ruffled. <laughs> you've been disrupted. But beyond that disruption, you need to take action. With all the notes that we've written, what are you going to do after now? Mm. What is your battle plan? This is war, and we are ready. Soldiers advance. They don't dance at the sound of war. They move yeah. forward and they go straight into battle. So this is our baptism for advancement. This is our commissioning. Everything that we've heard, she has rounded it off with so much power that I feel like we're back at the beginning even. I we're know. <laughs> it's time to <laughs> advance. Thank you so much, Coach Wendy. This has been beyond words. We, we are not even surprised because this is your mm -hmm. way now. Just, just... Pluck all the feathers. You've plucked all the feathers. Now you've put us inside the hot water. It's to barbecue us that is left after this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you so it. much. Soldiers <laughs> advance. You've heard from Mrs. Notch. Soldiers advance. What is your battle axe? What have you taken away from this conference? What are the wars that you're going to have to deal with? The trauma wars, the wars inside the words of, and this is how I was parented, and so that's how it's okay. The words of having to yell and flog, you need to fight that war. Mm -hmm. The truth is that the wars that we need to fight, the battles that we need to fight are right there in front of you. You can see it now very clearly. You can see yourself. <laughs> the mirror is right in front of you. You can see yourself. What are you going to do? You know, Mrs. Notch, there are two categories of people in this stream today. Those who make mockery, make jest, and just say, oh, what are they even saying? And laugh oh. and be swept away by the flood. And those who will enter the ark and be preserved. What That's category right. are you? I need for you to ask yourself, what category are you? Coach, thank you so much. You have delivered just like the pro that you are. Africa's number one. We were not expecting anything less. Thank you so much. Thank you for TIP, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yielding to this call. Thank you for this transformational journey. You know, along my journey, Coach said something to me. She said, I need for you to concentrate on this journey, not for your children, but for you. I didn't quite understand it then. I said, not for the children, but for you. So it, it portrays what she always says, that parenting is not about your child. It is first about you, the parent. So what are you going to do differently tonight because you attended this conference? This conference came to you at no child at all. It was free. Free. <laughs> what are you going to do differently with this gift that you received? Coach, thank you. Thank, thank you so you much, and Roy. Thank you. Unspeakable. <laughs> thank you so much, Mrs. Nutt. And you know, like I always say, it is one thing for us to come here. And, um, you know, it, yes, we've had a lot of people pay to be able to get this free to us. But the truth remains that you have paid something and what you have paid is attention. And your attention is one of the biggest currencies of the world today. Mm -hmm. And if you have given your attention without you being able to take, you know, in terms to convert it, it means that you have also wasted money. So it's mm. not just us that have wasted money, right? <laughs> for you to gain attention. So we had your attention because that's what we were looking for, right? But yet you paid. So nobody, you can't read anywhere when they tell you, you give attention, you, know, you do this attention. Attention is actually paid. It's a currency. So if you are paying attention and you're doing nothing with the attention mm. that you have paid, then that, that becomes, it becomes not useful to you. And you know, it, 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 we're all going to um, you, you know, account for the knowledge that we had access to. Every yes. single one of us. We're going to account for the access that we had. Every single one of us. And that's why 
when ah. we do some of the things we do, people say, oh, you're doing too much. Too we much. need to hold ourselves accountable to a system that is so high. We're not doing too much. We're just doing the normal. Because the world is a product of mediocrity, normalcy becomes like excellence. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, so coach is frozen there. So um, I'd like to say do yourself a favor and just jump right in. Jump right in. Do yourself a favor. Do generations yet unborn a favor. Today, um, you have learned a lot. What are you going to do differently because you had access to this conference? What are you going to do differently? You know, it's... If you didn't know, <laughs> we'll say you didn't know. Now that you know, what now are you that going you are to do? Aware. Now <laughs> that you are aware, how, <laughs> what are you going to do differently because you're now aware you will be judged? You will give account for those things that you've learned, for those things that you didn't know, but that you now know. What are you going to do differently? I'd like for everyone to just begin to thank the Academy for yes. all of the depth of knowledge that was shared here, for the personalities that was that were brought in here. I want you to begin to just say thank you. Just thank you. Thank the Academy. Thank the leadership of the Intentional Parents Academy. Um, Coach will be right back. Some people are <laughs> in the comment section, not Mrs. Notch, <laughs> and they are asking questions. Someone asked me, I have questions, I have questions, I have questions. Coach will be right here to answer a few of your questions. But just know that no one single conference <laughs> would deliver uh, what you need. You need to commit no. to the process. That's where the real transformation is. Yes. This is not. These questions are all embedded in the structure and the curriculum of the inner circle. That is the truth. However, while you're already uh, booking your slot and getting ready to join the Academy on the 1st of December, the things mm -hmm. that everything that I've heard in this conference is enough for me for one year. It's a steady diet. I can go back to it over and over again. What you have heard from here, it's really more than enough to carry you up until the time that the Academy opens. But the complete package, the true solution is in a, is in a structure. It's in that system. It's in that process. And in case you're having doubts, oh, welcome back, coach. <laughs> I think you need to unmute. Okay, I think she's still frozen right there. And she's back. Oh, she's so back. Sorry about that. Welcome yes, back, coach. So we Thank have so a question much. in the comment section. Um, okay. The person has been <laughs> consistently posting that question. So I okay. think we should just respond. She says it's in Kichi. Is yeah. So she says, um, how can you practice this from afar in case you are far from your children? Any strategy, especially if I am the only one I suppose she's saying uh, a partner is not following TIP, especially if she's the only one following TIP and she wants to practice this from afar and she's away from her children. Coach, okay, so, 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 so one of the things that I say is that in your parenting journey, there are choices that you make. And at every level of your journey, you must understand what choices can I make at this time and what mm. choices can I not make at this time. And that's what is called the seasons of life. I shared in the last, I said, okay, okay. Again, we have a little bit of network chat. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Welcome back, Coach. All right. So sorry about that. Um, in between networks, I don't know what happened. All right. So, and, you know, so you can, you need to, actually make decisions, some tough choices, all right? It's a period of choice. You need to decide, okay, at this time, what do I do? Where, at, at what level is my child, is my, are my children? That's one. Number two, if you've already taken the decision and there's no way to go back on it, <laughs> you would need to leverage a lot on technology. Like I tell um, the military fathers, all right? You leverage a lot on technology. 
technology can help you through the process. It can't be like as where you are. I might not be able to speak directly to your situation on a public stream. I'm being careful. You can see that I'm being really careful to really answer your question because there's really no blanket answer to that question, really. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I, I'm, I'm being careful to say, oh, yes, it's easy. This is what you're going to do. Once you come into the academy, you just learn. It's not it's not like that. It's not like that. There's, there's a lot to that conversation, all right? You might want to reach out to us, book a, a private session and really share what it is that you're talking about. Then I will be able to give my expert advice, all right? Okay, coach, there we have another question. It, okay, the question is, how do I train my boys when their father is not present in their lives? How do oh, I train oh, so, my boys? So, so, so one of the things that I say is, you had me mention parenting partners. Parenting partners is a thing, all right? Get into the academy, start walking through your own process, and then you would learn how to choose parenting partners. Please do not just go and carry anybody and say, one coach said they are your parenting partners. Please, that's not how it works. That's why I keep saying that parenting is not about tips and hacks. There is nothing you hear in this conference that is going to sustain you through your process. I say that again. There is nothing you have heard in this conference that is going to sustain you through your process. It will fail at some point because mm. you need some system and structure to be able to actually carry it in. So this is like, oh, so this is how it's done and all of that. But you need a system that helps you to build on it and to also conceptualize it. This is the reason why we do not admit people in the middle of the academy. It's not pride. I've said that severally. It is just that if I do, I will do you a disservice. I, um, this is, I am someone who works and my, my end result is, re my end game is result. I want to see results. I want to come out and then we see a system where TIP children are being, you know, come out and you see, and you say, yes, that child, you know, that, that system trained that child. That, that's my end goal. So it's not about your money. So I can collect your money in the middle of the year. When you enter, you finish, you pay again at the beginning of the year. But that's not what we're looking for. My, my team and I are giving to a whole lot of excellence, a whole lot of result. All right. So one of the things I would tell you to do is, Get into the academy, learn the process yourself, begin to know what it is you need to do, and then you will connect with parenting partners. I can assure you, I can assure you, you will connect with parenting partners. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Coach. Um, final question. I think I don't see any more questions in the stream right now. Is how do I build consistency in my home? How do I build consistency in consistency my home? Consistency is a skill. Mm. Many of the times, children learn consistency by watching you become consistent. Mm. And many parents are not consistent. Starting from your disciplinary strategy. You mm. even say things like, they don't know what I'm going to do. I'm very unpredictable. <laughs> Ah, you, they don't know me. You don't know me. My children know now. Before you know, they don't know which style I will bring out. Unpredictability is an enemy of parenting. Unpredictability. The more unpredictable you are, the more you make a mess of your process. So consistency comes from you becoming predictable. We're so mm. predictable in my home that my children know what can happen when. Because there is a structure, there is a system. So consistency comes from you becoming predictable. So don't, 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 don't box in ignorance. You know, normalized nonsense like, like DDK. Normalized. Say, you know, just normalized nonsense. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm unpredictable. I'm, you know, I say, I know how these children, they are, they're giving, are they the ones that will teach me? I know how to parent. Me, I'm very unpredictable. They don't know what I will do. You're killing your process. You're killing your process. So please, mm. that's the first place to start to build consistency. You become consistent. My disciplinary strategy in my home is consistent. Whatever it is my husband and I do with the children is very absolutely consistent. Our children know when we will come for a thing and when we will not come. They can predict exactly the actions we will take. So they know what they can do and what they cannot do. Very predictable. And I'm not one of those parents that, um, you know, find you with, you know, too many options. You can have this. You can have all that. You can have this. The world is free. 
just do whatever you like. No, we're not. So my children also understand that. So we're not unpredictable. Our values are clear. The things we can do is clear. The things we cannot do is clear. Nobody's trying to catch anybody anywhere. Nobody's keeping cane and say, I'm try me, try me. I'm waiting for you. That's what you do. But you do not know that all those things, all those try me, is as if we do discipline like we're waiting for our children at the junction. Mm -hmm. Now I wait for you at the junction until you get there. Then I will deal with you. So you're killing your process. All right. So I would if you need to learn how to actually become very predictable, then you need to join the academy to know how to build systems, to know how to build structures and build a predictable system. Predictability is a gift on your parenting journey. Mm, come on Predictability now. is a gift on your parenting journey. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you again and again. I don't know, a thousand, a million thank yous are not enough. We still have the comment section buzzing. The comment section is buzzing. Hey, everybody. Are you thanking Coach Wendy for an amazing, amazing conference? Coach, do you have any last words for us? Or should we just go on? Let me ask you the comments. <laughs> should, we, should, we, should we just do an all night? <laughs> continue. <laughs> okay, is coach there? The, I think the, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. We need to we need to go home. All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, the TIPNR conference comes to an end today. But the good news is the TIP Academy never comes to an end. It continues. So oh, you know, a lot of people were at the place where they are right now thinking, what do I do? The conference is ended where I'm even getting a lot of things that I need to do, get into the academy, all right? It's going to help you a lot. It is not because the academy is created by us. It's because the academy will help you. I know it like I know my name, that the academy will help you. If it doesn't help you, come back to me. I take it upon myself to help people who come to me and say, coach, ah, this thing, I don't know. I take it upon myself because I'm, I am very, very concerned about intentional growth. All right. So don't stop here. Don't just wow, wow, drama, wow, tell them and all of that. That we shout in the comment section when a conference like this is going on. All right. Go ahead. Follow us. Get into the academy. While you're waiting, follow, get books. All right. God has blessed us with a lot of resources. All right. I have written over 20 materials. All right. Over the years. All right. And those materials will change your life. Get uh -huh. that and begin to walk through, all right? There are books. I've written books that are transformational. You can't even read any of my books and, and get and be at a place, all right? So get them and begin to walk your journey through, all right? The conference ends, yes, but your parenting journey doesn't end. It continues, and you need to keep doing the work because the work is continuous. Remember, parenting is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Thank, thank you so much. All right, Coach, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. All righty. And um, I don't know if I can still be heard, but I just want to say yes, thank you to all clear. of the moderators. Thank you to the TIP team. Thank you to the team that <laughs> haven't slept <laughs> in the past seven days. Literally, we actually have people who are not sleeping well, <laughs> including myself. Thank you so much for being a part of our process. Thank you for making TIP what it is. When people ask me what is the greatest thing that have happened to you, I keep saying that we have the gift of men. The ministry of men is a ministry that God has blessed us with. And it's a ministry we play in fantastically. Trust me, who have a degree, a PhD in the Ministry of Men. <laughs> thank you to everyone. Thank you to Yaders. Thank you to our moderators. Your time. One prayer. I just pray that God will meet you at the point of your need at every point in time. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Do not forget to follow us on all our social media handle. And um, we would continue to go through from there. Thank you to you, Mrs. Nock, and Joy Ishimoka. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. An Thank absolute you. pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity Thanks. to moderate 
in this session. Thank you so much, ma'am. I appreciate you. I honor you. And you know, I love, love you. <laughs> Thank you, coach. This has really been an honor. Thank you and God bless you. We, we rise to call you blessed, you and the entire team. The ones that we do not see, that don't sleep, that are sending messages at odd hours and you're wondering, don't you guys mm -hmm. sleep? Thank you so much, Coach. God bless you. And thank you, everyone, for being here and for staying through. This is that staying power that Coach was talking about. This is how you build mm -hmm. consistency. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This has thank been you an so absolute much. honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And see you guys at the Inner Circle. Don't forget yes. that the Inner Circle fee changes from tomorrow. Please. <laughs> Don't forget that. See you at the Academy. Thank you, everyone. Yes, it was 2018. In 2018, I got really worried about the way parenting was going in our times. And I was genuinely angry, right? Like I was angry. What was happening around me? And I knew that if nothing was done about the parenting that I saw, as at that time, there was going to be a problem. So in 2018, we got the mandate to start the Intentional Parent Academy. And we went live 1st January 2018. But that wasn't enough. We needed platforms. We needed avenues to be able to reach people, to be able to teach, educate, and get people to understand that parenting was a big job. And then we got the mandate to start the Intentional Parent Academy Annual Conference. We started in the same year in 2018. Join me as I walk you through the journey of the Intentional Parent Academy Annual Conference in the past six years. <laughs> we have evolved. It's been a journey. Join me as I take you through that journey today. The Intentional Parent Annual Conference was just a subset of this mandate that have been given to me. Um, so I knew that if nothing is done, we were headed for a disaster. So in my anger, <laughs> I moved. And that was one of the biggest decisions I would have to take in my life. And thinking about it now in retrospect, if they had told me that this is what it takes to be able to uphold a mandate like this, honestly, I can't be truthful to you. I would say that I'm not doing this anymore. And you know, the, the, the TIP annual conference became a subset and it was our way of giving back to the world. It was our way of saying that, see, parenting is not about tips and hacks. There are more, there is more that we, we need to offer. Now, within the broader scope of the Intentional Parenting Mission, the, the TIP annual conference emerged as a way for us to actually do our mandate in a bigger scale. Now, our journey comments in 20. 18 not knowing exactly how we would accomplish our goals so i tell you a very funny story so when we got the mandate to host the conference you know i went ahead and 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 i said to myself who do i tell that i want to do a conference online and stream online it wasn't a common thing six years ago and then moreover it wasn't even something people believed in like you're teaching us intentional parenting who are you why are you teaching us intentional parenting like you're teaching us parenting we already know how to parent so it was not something that people wanted to key into. It wasn't something people wanted to become part of. Now, there were three people who were giving to us on the journey that <laughs> today I do not take for granted. Two of them are speaking at this annual conference currently. And one of them spoke at last year's annual conference, has become you know, um, a speaker you know, almost every year. That was Z.O.B. Taiwa Akinlami, who is my mentor, and then my beloved, very beloved sister-in-law, who is a Yitayo Yotin. These were people I believe that didn't even know what I was talking about, yet they just felt, if this small girl is saying that this thing, there's something in it, then we should actually listen and draw her to push this out, of, out to the world. I met D.O.B. online and she was someone that I had followed, you know, and I, and I was enjoying the way she talks about, you know, parenting her children and she was the homeschooling queen. 
and then I approached her and she said oh I love what you do and I would like to be part of it and then I approached it was it was you know um, not so um, difficult to get my sister-in-law to get together on the boat she just said I, I, I we, are, we need to get her come let's do it let's do it and then it was um, Taiwa Kinlami I had met Taiwa Kinlami barrister Taiwa Kinlami the preacher at another conference that was the very first online conference I had spoken at and then I had met him and I listened to him you know talk and it was so obvious that there was something about this man that I wanted so I immediately started to follow him started to you know uh, meet him started to um, connect with him and when the the mandate came I had connected to barrister to a certain level so I, I spoke to him and then he said yes I'm going to do this with you so there was it three people and myself and a TIP on our conference took place 2018 what a journey who would have thought that today we're going to be doing TIP on our conference in this scale of magnitude and when um, you know they spoke it was it was like it was like a a a a something that had never happened before that was even before the pandemic 2018 people didn't know what online streaming you know wasn't common and all of that and after that conference i knew that we'd be launched into a realm of not going back so sometimes when i get tired and i say you know what i'm not doing this anymore and i remember nah you have been launched into a realm of not going back and then in 2019, the TIBNR conference became big. It moved from three speakers to 24 speakers in a year. What happened? In 2018, I had uh, the, the TIP community in Facebook has started to grow and it has grown to about 12,000 people in the community. And somehow, we got the attention of the Facebook, the Facebook Inc., which is now Meta, and they reached out to to me, and um, eventually I would become a Facebook global leader. We were 113 all over the world, and I became a Facebook global leader representing Abuja. We were only three in Nigeria, and that exposed me to global influence. I was able to meet people from all over the world. Who were playing in the same industry where i was playing i was privileged to represent africa at the 2019 parenting global conference at the facebook headquarters, headquarters in california and at that you know forum being engaged at that you know level i started to meet people from all over the world i started to engage and that was when i knew that the tip conference mandate was a mandate to reach the globe it wasn't a mandate to just reach Nigeria. You know, the Bible says that you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So Nigeria is not the earth, neither is it the world. So we needed to reach the world. And the way to reach the world, the internet is a blessing. It's really the blessing to be able to reach the world. And then it gave me access to people. And I started to, um, you know, run and then connect with people at that level. And that was how we got into um, the global streaming level. That was how our our conferences became something that we would do globally, having speakers from all over the world. That year, we had speakers from Germany, we had speakers from India, we had speakers from Jamaica, we had speakers from Australia. It was something else. It looked like we had broken the ceiling. It looked like you know there was nothing more that was going to come by the following year which was 20 you know 19 our team our 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 team in 20 you know um 18 focused on parenting as a united front are we ready in 2019 our team was we explored parenting for a better future and then by 2020 we began to dive deeper creating a better world through parenting and at the Better World True Parenting, it was massive. We had 30 speakers. We had people, you know, streaming live concurrently from all over the world. And it was an amazing experience. And we thought that the TIPNR conference had become yet bigger. 
and in 2021 we tackled parenting today for tomorrow that was the team amazing out 32 speakers everywhere you know <laughs> very amazing and we streamed online having thousands of people watch you know at each of the sessions the interesting thing by 2020 we explored the parenting advantage each of this team at the TIPNA conference has been given to us none of them have come as something that you know we just go out there and it's just you know pick it there and just you know what um, one of my very um, close people pastor wisdom mostly will say some things are taught some things are caught Wendy what you do is caught and believe you me many of these things they are caught they are not particularly learned in that way that you think now when we did the parenting advantage it was i don't know how to describe it there, there were there were moments where i watched the parenting ad advantage and i just had tears in my eyes by the time we were done at the parenting advantage we streamed we had a 1.8 we had made 1.8 impressions on youtube and it's become the tip panel conference has become a place where parents actually clear schedule every year last week in july to be in attendance people have taken leaves people clear their schedule people see that it's place to say you know what it's the piano conference in this year and we are going to clear it up and this year proudly we present to you the TIP annual conference that is themed the battlefield of parenting now with the tagline parenting is war <laughs> people have asked why this tagline why this you know um, team because I have come to a place where I've realized that whatever it is that we are fighting today if we don't finish fighting it the next generation continues to fight it the battles you don't fight today, the next generation continues to fight that battle. The battles you don't finish, your, the next generation carries it on. And I say in my words that parenting is war. How you fight is how you finish. Where you stop is where the next generation takes off from. The, the, the issues you don't fight today, your, your children are going to continue to fight it. The, the anger you don't fight today, is, oh, it just runs in our family. The, the healing you don't heal today, you leave it to the next generation to continue. So that is what the TIP annual conference this year is about. The battlefield of parenting. Parenting is war. We're not talking about physical war. We're talking about the psychological war, the spiritual war that is faced, the emotional war that is faced with us. And and we are in super perilous times when people ask me do you think that parenting today you know what's happening and all of that and I say to them what will come will come it was Pastor Olakule Shreiro who was the keynote speaker last year at the TIP annual conference that said what will come will come it doesn't matter how much you battle with it and I say what has come has come there's nothing we can do about it what we can do about it is to get into the safety. What the parents in the academy, the inner circle, will call the ark. Get into a system that preserves you. Right now, it's about preservation. It's about separation. We have come a long way since our humble beginnings. You know, our inaugural conference only had around 20 participants. <laughs> and enthusiastically engaging and sharing their experiences. Trust me, the way we are doing TIP annual conference this year is the way we have done it in 2018, all right? This event took place in our community and that community was just about 5,000 people as at the time we streamed live in 2018. Today, today, we're streaming live with over 10,000 people who are registered, participating actively. We're streaming live on our community of over 20,000 people participating actively at this conference. Such an honor, such a blessing, such a blessing. And it is 
something that we do not take for granted. People say that what will be your greatest win? Every time they ask me, what will be your greatest win in TIP annual conference this year? And I repeat the same thing. We have entered into the grace of men. And that was two years ago. And I can tell you that we keep expanding on what the ministry of men is. We have been blessed by men. We have been blessed by people. We have been blessed by people who go extra mile to see that the TIP Annual Conference becomes a success every year. We have partners who have gone through a lot to be able to ensure that this conference comes to you at no charge. The TIP Annual Conference is to run with us solely funding. Right now, we have partners who join us to fund the TIP Annual Conference so that people like you can have access to the TIP Annual Conference without having to pay money. But believe you me, you are paying something as well. You are paying attention. Attention is paid. You are paying with your time. You need to pay something to be able to gain for what it is that we have paid. We might have you know, committed financial resources to this. But then again, there is the part of your own commitment. If you don't do it, all of these becomes null and void. So I call on you participating today that you take the TIP Annual Conference as the place, the mountain of answers. I like the way that the TIP Inner Circle Parents have named the TIP Annual Conference the parenting shilo of our time. You're looking for where you got to get answers for your parenting journey. You are at the right place. So this is me. And I say, ladies and gentlemen, we warmly welcome you to the TIP Annual Conference 2023. Themed the battlefield of parenting. With the tagline, parenting is war. Together, we will continue to make a positive impact and shape the future of parenting. We're not relenting. We're here till the end of time. And as we fulfill this year's mandate to give you access to superior knowledge, we welcome you. Thank you. Sit back. Enjoy it here. Make sure that you take out this wisdom and ensure that you use them on your journey. My name is Wendy Ologi, and I'm the founder of the Intentional Parent Academy. Congratulations to all of you.